signs and madda letters only one second law no more than that just keep that in mind ya bani israil adhkuru ni'mati allati an'amtu alaykum wa anni fadhal Fawwaltukum ala alameen. Let's gather in in your lungs, full capacity, then read. Ya Bani Israel, adhkuru ni'mati allati an'amtu alaykum wa anni fawwaltukum ala alameen. Ya Bani Israel, adhkuru ni'mati allati an'amtu alaykum wa anni fawwaltukum ala al-alameen. You broke your breath here. Ya Bani Israel, adhkuru ni'mati allati an'amtu alaykum wa anni wa anni fadlaltukum ala al-alameen. If you are going to break your breath and start from what again? Ya Bani Israel, adhkuru ni'mati allati an'amtu alaykum wa anni fadhaltukum ala al-alameen. Wattaqu yawman la tajzi nafsun an nafsin shay'an wa la yuqbalu minha shafa'atun wa la yu'khad wa la yu'khad minha adlun wa la hum yunsarun what 
تقو يوم لا تجزي نفس عن نفس شيء ولا يقبل منها شفاعة ولا يؤخذ ولا يؤخذ منها عدل ولا هم ينصرون. If you are going to stop here, then the, the way you will stop is ولا يؤخذ. The dhamma of that will turn into sukoon. وَاتَّقُوا يَوْمَ لَا تَجْزِي نَفْسٌ عَن نَفْسٍ شَيْئًا وَلَا يُقْبَلْ وَلَا يُقْبَلُ مِنْهَا شَفَاعَةٌ وَلَا وَلَا يُؤْخَذُ وَلَا يُؤْخَذُ مِنْهَا عَدْلٌ وَلَا هُمْ يُنصَرُونَ وَاتَّقُوا يَوْمَ لَا تَجْزِي نَفْسٌ عَن نَفْسٍ شَيْئًا وَلَا يُقْبَلُ مِنْهَا شَفَاعَةٌ وَلَا يُؤْخَذُ مِنْهَا عَدْلٌ وَلَا هُمْ يَنصَرُونَ Make sure that you are reading shafa'atun, not taun. The taun sound will not be correct. Make sure it is fully tun. وَاتَّقُوا يَوْمَ لَا تَجْزِي نَفْسٌ عَن نَفْسٍ شَيْئًا وَلَا يُقْبَلُ مِنْهَا شَفَاعَتٌ وَلَا يُؤْخَذُ مِنْهَا عَدُلٌ وَلَا هُمْ يُنصَرُونَ وَاتَّقُوا يَوْمَ لَا تَجْزِي نَفْسٌ عَن نَفْسٍ شَيْئًا وَلَا يُقْبَلُ مِنْهَا شَفَاعَةٌ وَاتَّقُوا يَوْمَ لَا تَجْزِي نَفْسٌ عَن نَفْسٍ شَيْئًا وَلَا يُقْبَلُ مِنْهَا شَفَاعَةٌ وَلَا يُؤْخَذُ مِنْهَا عَدْلٌ وَلَا هُمْ يَنْصَرُونَ No. I think you are feeling sleepy. Because of the dinner. Is it correct? Maybe. Whenever you start a lesson, whether it's school or it's Quran lesson, eat less so that you remain active. It is necessary. وَاتَّقُوا يَوْمَ لَا تَجْزِي نَفْسٌ عَن نَفْسٍ شَيْئًا وَلَا يُقْبَلُ مِنْهَا شَفَاعَةٌ وَلَا يُؤْخَذُ مِنْهَا عَدْلٌ وَلَا هُمْ يُنصَرُونَ وَاتَّقُوا يَوْمَ لَا تَجْزِي نَفْسٌ عَن نَفْسٍ شَيْئًا وَلَا يُقْبَلُ مِنْهَا شَفَاعَةٌ وَلَا يُؤْخَذُ مِنْهَا عَدْلٌ وَلَا هُمْ يَعْصَرُونَ وَإِذْ نَجَّيْنَاكُمْ مِنْ آلِ فِرْعَوْنَ يَسُومُونَكُمْ سُوءَ الْعَذَابِ يُذَبِّحُونَ أَبْنَاءَكُمْ وَيَسْتَحْيُونَ نِسَاءَكُمْ وَفِي ذَلِكُمْ بَلَاءٌ مِّنْ رَبِّكُمْ عَظِيمٌ وَإِذْ نَجَّيْنَاكُمْ مِنْ آلِ فِرْعَوْنَ يَسُومُ سَرْ 
وَإِذْ نَجَّيْنَاكُمْ مِنْ آلِ فِرْعَوْنَ يَسُومُنَكُمْ سُوءٌ نو بچے نو 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 there is no Hamza there is no سکون on Hamza this is wow مدہ ہیر come on again وَإِذْ نَجَّيْنَاكُمْ مِنْ آلِ فِرْعَوْنَ يَسُومُونَكُمْ سُوءَ الْعَذَابِ يُغَبِّحُونَ أَبْنَاءَكُمْ From here يُذَبِّحُونَ بحون أبناءكم ويستحيون نساءكم وفي ذلكم بلا وَفِي ذَلِكُمْ بَلَاءٌ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ عَظِيمٌ صدق الله العظيم صدق الله العظيم Okay, you can call Amina now. Wa alaykum as salam wa rahmatullah. How are you, Amina? I'm doing fine. How are you? Alhamdulillah, I'm also fine. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Please read. Wallahu. Look, uh, the middle lam has oh. the the middle. Wallahu. Before... Yeah, yeah. Um, um, but but the communal are we? No, but the. ثم يعيدكم فيها ويخرجكم إخراجا والله جعل لكم الأرض بساتا بساتا لتسلكوا 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 منها سب سب سبلا في جاها في جاجا في جاجا قال نوح نوح الرب إن إنهم عصوني واتبعوا ملم واتبعوا واتبعوا ملم بزده no again try again يزده ماله 
wa 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 duhu illa illa khasara ya yeah, good job wa mak wa makaru mak makra kubra wa wa qalu la ta la ta can you can you please read this one again wa makaru mak 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 kubara. Good job. Wakalu. Wakalu. Um. Let the run run. Yeah. Ali hat. Ali hat kum. Alihatakum. Wala. Alihatakum. Wala. Okay, Idgham rule is being applied. This is not single fatha. If we, 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 yeah, we would have said dav if there was only one single fatha, but there is double fatha here, so we will apply idgham here. What down wala? No, no, wala. no, no, don't stretch the wall, no reason to do that. What down wala? What down wala? So, so. Suwa a Suwa a Suwa a Suwa a Yeah Wala Yaga Yaga Um Waya Wana Sra um, I have a question. Go on. So you said that when we when we see them alif that um we don't stop. Yeah, but I also said that if below lam alif there is a sign, we have the option of stopping. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Similarly, if it is end of the verse and there is lam alif, then also we have the option of stopping. Okay. Um. Wakad. Uh. Uh. Wakad. Hmm. I. 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 This song. Oh, no, 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 no. Wala tazidil walimina. Wala tazidil walimina. Illa. Wala la. Good job. Sadaqallahu al-Azim. Sadaqallahu al-Azim. The flight to Abyssinia and ostracism in the gorge or George of Ibn Abi Talib. The hardships and sufferings borne by the Muslims were ever on the increase. The Prophet ﷺ at last permitted them to emigrate to some other place. Abyssinia at that time was ruled by a Christian king who later on embraced Islam, famous for his mercy and equity. 
in Rajab of the fifth year of the mission, the first group emigrated to Abyssinia. The group, comprom uh, the group comprised about 12 men and 5 women. The Quraysh pursued them to the port to capture them, but their vessels had left the shore. When the group reached Abyssinia, they heard the rumor that the whole tribe of the Quraysh had accepted Islam. They were naturally very much pleased at the news and returned to their country. On approaching Makkah, they learned that the rumor was false and the persecutions were going on unabated. Some of them decided to return to Abyssinia and the rest entered Makkah. Seeking the protection of a few influential people, this is known as the first migration to Abyssinia. Later on, a bigger group of 83 men and 18 women emigrated to Abyssinia separately. This is called the second emigration to the country. Some Sahaba took part in both the migrations. The Quraysh did not like the emigrations and the thought of peace enjoyed by the fugitives gave them no rest. They sent a delegation to Abyssinia with handsome presents for the king, his courtiers and the clergy. The delegation first met the chiefs and the priests and by offering them presents succeeded in winning the court officials to their side. Having thus made their way to the royal court, they prostrated themselves before the king and then presenting the gifts put their case before him. They said, O king, a few foolish lads of our community have renounced their ancestral faith and have joined an absolutely new religion which is opposed to our as well as your religions. They have come and settled in your country. The nobility of Makkah, their own parents and kith and kin have sent us to take them back to their country. We beseech you to make them over to us. The king replied, We cannot make over the people who have sought our shelter without proper investigation. Let us call them to our presence and hear them out. If your charge of opus, opus apostasy against them is genuine, we shall make them over to you. The king thereupon summoned the Muslims to his court. They were at first greatly distressed and did not know what to do, but Allah gave them courage, and they decided to go and place the true facts before the king. On appearing before him, they greeted him with salam. Someone from the courtiers objected that they had not prostrated before the king according to the rules of the land. They explained, Our Prophet ﷺ has forbidden us from prostrating before anyone except Allah. The king then asked them to submit what defense they could make to the charges brought against them. Jafar anhu rose and addressed the king thus, O king, we were an ignorant people. We neither knew Allah nor his prophets, alayhim salam. We worshipped stones. We used to eat carrion and commit all sorts of undesirable and disgraceful acts. We did not make good our obligations to our relatives. The strong among us would thrive at the expense of the weak. Till at last Allah raised a Prophet for our reformation. His noble descent, upright conduct, integrity of purpose and pure life are only too well known amongst us. He called upon us to worship Allah and exhorted us to give up idolatry and stone worshipping. He enjoined upon us right conduct and forbade us from indecency. He taught us to tell the truth, to make good our trust, to have regard for our kids and kin and to do good to our neighbors. From him we learned to observe salah, fasting, zakah and good conduct. And to shun everything foul and to avoid bloodshed, he forbade adultery, lewdness, telling of lies, misappropriating the orphan's heritage, 
bringing false accusations against others and all other indecent things of the sort. He taught us the Quran, the wonderful book of Allah. So we believed in him, followed him and acted upon to his teachings. Thereupon our people began to persecute us and to subject us to tortures, thinking that we might abjure our faith and revert to idolatry. When, however, their cruelties exceeded all bounds, we took shelter in your country by the permission of our Prophet ﷺ. The king said, let us hear something of the Qur'an that your Prophet ﷺ has taught you. Hazrat Jafar anhu recited a few verses from the beginning of Surah Maryam, which touched the hearts of the king and the priestly class so much that tears flowed down their cheeks and wetted their beards. The king remarked, By Allah, these words and the words revealed to Musa salam, are the rays of one and the same light. And he told the Quraysh embassy that he would uh, that he would by no means hand over the refugees to them. Then disappointed and disgraced, they held a council. One of them said, I have hit upon a plan that is sure to draw the king's wrath upon their heads. Although the others did not agree to such a drastic step, for after all they were their own flesh and blood, yet he would not listen. The next day they ex excited the king by telling him that those heretics denounced Isa salam, and did not believe in his divinity. The Muslims were again summoned to the court. They were much more distressed this time when the king inquired about their belief in Isa salam. They said, we believe in what Allah has revealed about him to our Prophet wasallam. That is, he is a servant and prophet of Allah and is his word which he conveyed to the virgin and pure Maryam. Nega said Isa salam, himself does not say anything beyond that. The priests then began to murmur in protest, but the king would not listen to them. He returned to the delegation, the presents they had brought for him and said to the Muslims, go and live in peace. If nobody ill treats you, he if anybody ill treats you, he will have to pay heavily for it. A royal declaration was also issued to that effect. This enhanced the prestige of the Muslims in the country, and the Quraysh delegation had to return crestfallen. This failure of the Quraysh embassy to Abyssinia and the triumph of Muslims over them led to an increase in the exasperation of the idolaters. The conversion of Umar anhu to Islam added fuel to fire. They grew more and more embittered. Till things came to such a pass that a large number of the Quraysh chiefs conspired to kill Muhammad wasallam outright and deal summarily with the whole affair. But this was not so easy. Banu Hashim to which clan the Prophet wasallam belonged were strong in number and still stronger in influence. Although all of them were not Muslims, yet even the non-Muslims among them would not agree to or tolerate the murder of the Prophet ﷺ. The Quraysh therefore decided to place a social ban on the Bani Hashim. And their chiefs drew up a document to the effect that none of them or their clans would associate with, buy from or sell to those who sided with the Banu Hashim. Unless and until they surrender Muhammad وسلم, for the death penalty. All of them signed this document on first Muharram of seventh year of the mission, and the scroll was hung up in the Kaaba in order to give it full sanctity. And for three long years the Prophet وسلم, was shut up with all his work in the Glen which was a subsection of one of the gorges that run down to Mecca. For three long years, nobody could see them, or nor could they see anybody. They could not purchase anything in Mecca, nor from any trader coming from outside. If any person was found outside this natural prison, he was beaten mercilessly, and if he asked for anything, it was flatly refused. Soon their stock of food was exhausted and they were reduced 
to famine rations. The women and more especially the children and sucking, suckling babies would cry with hunger and this was harder on them than their own starvation. During the last part of this uh, period, their sole subsistence was the little food that the husbands of Hashmi, Hashmite women married into other clans managed to smuggle into the clan in the darkness of night. At last, by the grace of Allah, after three years, the scroll was eaten up by white ants and the ban was removed. The severity of the afflictions which they bore during this period of ostracism cannot be imagined. But the Sahaba not only remained steadfast in their faith, but also kept busy in spreading the light of Islam amongst their comrades in distress. Look how much the Sahaba have suffered in the paths of Allah and for the cause of Islam. We claim to follow their footsteps and dream of the material progress and spiritual elevation which was theirs, but how much have we suffered in the true cause? What sacrifice have we offered for the sake of Allah in His path? Success is always proportionate to the sacrifice. We wish to live in luxury and comfort and are too eager to raise shoulder to shoulder with the non-Muslims in enjoying the good things of this world forgetting the hereafter and then at the same time we expect to receive the same help from Allah which the Sahaba received in their time we cannot beguile anybody but ourselves by working like this as the poet has said I am afraid O wayfarer that you will not reach the Kaaba because the path that you are following goes in the opposite direction to Turkestan All right, Amina. Wish you best of luck. Meet you tomorrow. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum assalam.